Hey everyone! Welcome back to my Let's Play of the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles! When we last left off, we finally solved Cosma's very, very sad case. Um, and we decided that we would try and take his place basically in this exchange student lawyer trip to London. And to do that, we had to study Hella on the ship coming over with the help of our good old pal Suzato. Um, and now we're here in front of Chief Justice, Lord Chief Justice. There's a lot of name titles, name titles, titles in his name. Uh, Strongheart, I think was his name. And he said, sure, I'll give you a shot. I'll give you one test and we'll see if you can do it. Uh, I still think he looks like a Pokemon trainer, but what do I know? So uh, that's what we're going to pick up today. And I just want to say thank you guys so much for your continued support of the series. I hope you're having a blast and let's go. What is the test, sir? So, what form will the test take, exactly? Tell me, Mr. Norahodo, what do you consider the role of a lawyer to be? Well, defending people, of course. Well said. So, let's have you defend someone. Huh? Your timing is perfect, in fact. There's an up trial about to begin later today. No advocate has been appointed for the defense as yet, so this will be welcome news. T today Straight away? Oh, shit. If you manage to secure a verdict of not guilty, you'll have passed my test. What could be simpler? Uh, how do I get myself into these situations? Wait, so what if, what if the person's guilty? Like, I'm just supposed to side with an evil person? Like, what? Well, could I ask, what sort of trial is it, Lord Strongheart? Hmm, yes, good question. Oh, I remember. It's a murder trial. Murder? Extremely simple case, I understand. You really can't lose. That's easy to say. But I should mention, just in case, if the defendant is found guilty, he will of course be sentenced to capital punishment. Capital punishment? He'll, he'll be put to death? Here in Great Britain, murderers are sent to the gallows without exception. Presumably you read that much in your short sea-based introduction to British law. We... we can't possibly agree to such a test! We would be toying with a man's life! I am the Lord Chief Justice, and I've decided it's acceptable. But... you can't do that, can you? See, I knew he was evil. I mean, if they don't have a lawyer, is it any worse for them to have, like, a... Uh, I almost said a veteran. A new noob lawyer? Like, no lawyer versus, like, a, a child? I mean, like, I think the child... <laughs> I call myself a child. The child's better, right? There's no need to overcomplicate this. All you have to do is ensure that you don't lose. He reminds me of the... Oh my god, yo, what if he's, like, a relative of that guy in Ace Attorney? I don't remember his name. I think he was evil in the end, but he was like super like crazy. He was like someone's mentor or something. Ah, it might have been in one of the the Apollo Justice games actually. I can't remember, but anyways, he kind of looked like this guy. So the defendant may live or die depending on how well I perform in court. If I lose, it will be hanged. Mr. Norohodo, you've come to me claiming to be a lawyer. If you want me to take you seriously, you need to prove you're willing to do a lawyer's job. And you say you intend to see through the will of your compatriot, Mr. Osogi. I would like to understand just how far you're willing to go in order to make that happen. He's testing my resolve. What's the matter? You've fallen silent. I'm sorry, but time is pressing. The trial begins shortly. I need an answer from you now. What's it to be? Yeah! What do I say? Do I agree to this absurd test? I'll do it. The person needs a lawyer, you know what I mean? Alright then, if I have to give you a decision now, my answer is... I can't do it! I can't get the words out! Really? 
15 seconds. Hmm, your decision making needs work if you want to be a lawyer. That was too slow. So, it's as I suspected, is it? Sorry? You're a punk ass bitch. You have noble intentions but lack the resolve to see them through. The test is cancelled. Thank you for stopping by. Go and acquire your ticket for passage back to the East tomorrow. This conversation is over. Wait, bro, I didn't I didn't answer. Yes, Lord Strongheart. Thank you for offering me a chance. Mr. Naruhodo. I'm sorry, Miss Suzato, but what could I do? It's all right. I understand. You do? It's not an easy decision to choose whether to defend a man in these circumstances. But resolve has absolutely nothing to do with it. Oh, shit! What are you trying to say, madam? Uh, I'm just watching like, uh... I think what Miss Suzato means is that no matter how badly I'd like to be recognized as a lawyer and stay here in Great Britain, to risk another man's life by treating his one and only chance at a trial so trivially would be utterly unforgivable, and I feel exactly the same way. I'm sure the defendant won't see this trial as a test, as some kind of experiment. It's his life, man! Yeah, bow down. A lawyer may fight for his clients in court day after day, but for each one of those clients, the particular day they stand in the dock may be the only chance they have to fight to prove their innocence. No, I was wrong. I'm not qualified to do that job yet. I'm sorry for wasting your precious time, Lord Chief Justice. Devon, I'm Rianosuke. Wait, Mr. Norihodo. Come crawling back to me now, eh? Oh, was there something else? It's approximately 20 minutes by carriage to the Old Bailey from here. If you leave immediately, you should still be there in time. But, but I just said that... I was quite serious in what I told you. The defendant in this case has literally no one to advocate for him. What? At this point, he can't hope to find someone to represent him. The trial will begin without a defense. Yeah, see, that's what I was saying. It's better if at least he has someone. And if that happens, there's only one possible outcome. You are his only hope. You will receive the most severe sentence the judge can pass down. But that's awful. But that is the truth. Why does it have to be like this? Please don't expect an answer to every question. Can he not afford one? The cold, hard truth of the matter is that there is only one person now with the chance to save this man from a very miserable end. And that is you. Ah, I'm really his only hope? So, what do you say now, madam? Me? What do you mean, Lord Strongheart? You said it wasn't an easy decision to choose whether to defend a man in these circumstances, and I agree. But in my estimation, it is purely and simply a matter of resolve. Oh! Our time is up here. I have a meeting to attend. I must leave in two minutes and sixteen seconds. So, venture into our great city and enjoy yourselves. Leave a man to die. Uh, he's gone. Huh. The old Bailey. Let's go, Suzato. If we're going to do this, Mr. Naruhodo, we must leave at once. Alright, girl. What to do? Miss Suzato, can I just ask you something? Why did she get into that position? Careful. From this position, I can perform a Suzato takedown in an instant. I know. Mr. Naruhodo, you heard Lord Strongheart. The trial starts imminently. If I need to throw you, I will. You know, uh, you could just say, I think we should hurry to the courtroom. 
If you need to ask me anything, it had better wait until we're at the old Bailey. Alright, girl, calm down. I was just asking, yo. Uh, London saw- oh, I didn't read this. Office of the Lord Chief Justice Strongheart. That's such a long title. In Britain's great capital city, London. It's grand stone e architecture and the echoey tick of the vast cogwheels lended an air of authority. This oppressive air is really quite stifling. True. London's highest criminal court with an illustrious past, the Old Bailey. This is where I'm to take my test and prove my worthiness as a lawyer. Let's go! Oh. 18th of February, 9.45 a.m. The Old Bailey Defendant's Antechamber. Alright, I'm interested to see who is this person we're defending. Oh, thank goodness we're in time. There's still 15 minutes until the trial begins. Yeah, for us to look at the whole case file. I never knew a horse-drawn carriage could go so fast. Thought my teeth were gonna rattle loose. Did you hear what I said to the driver when we climbed aboard? Move it, bitch. Get us to our destination in five minutes, driver, and there's a guinea in it for you. It's one of my favorite lines from the Herlock Sholmes stories, and it worked quite perfectly. I'm not sure why you're so pleased. I thought we were gonna die, and we had to pay gold for the privilege. Well, at least we arrived here before the trial started. Yes, I suppose there's that. Anyway, I don't understand it. The court clerk said the defendant should be here. But there's no sign of him at all. Are we sure it's a guy? So, this is the old Bailey. Even this room for defendants to wait in is grand. Are you alright, Mr. Naruhoto? I'm feeling tense, that's all. This place gives me the same sense of foreboding that I remember from the Supreme Court in Japan. An oppressive air, almost as if the building itself is gonna crush whoever is about to be sentenced. It feels like only yesterday that I was the one about to be crushed. Yes, whoever the man you're, defend oh, you're to defend is, I imagine he's feeling very alone at this moment. Uh, top of the morning to you, madam, sir. <laughs> uh, what are you doing following me here? Things are fair desperate, are they? Sorry? Would you look at those expressionless faces from the East, are you? Um, we're from Japan, yes. Oh, that's not nice. Ah, Japan, is it? Right, say no more. So, how much do you need? No, no, we're just here because... No need to explain, fella. I've been there myself, so I have. No place to go, nothing to eat, barely a penny to your name, and all the while in a strange faraway land. Well, actually, uh, we haven't found a place to stay yet, no. Oh my god, tis grand, tis grand. Let me stop by giving you a thousand guineas. Say nothing now. Uh, a, a thousand guineas? Please, Mrs. Zato, you don't have to shout. But a thousand guineas is enough to build an entire mansion in the most prestigious area of Tokyo. What? Tis nothing to me at all. I like to ensure I have sufficient funds to weather a rainy day, you see. I have enough wealth to buy the city of London two or three times over. Could that much rain even fall in one day? Well, even so, we couldn't possibly accept such a large sum of money. Ah! That hit me in the eye! <laughs> Don't get me wrong, fella. I'm not giving it to you, no strength attached. I'll be wanting you to do something for me. Oh? To be honest, that is a little embarrassing. The trial that's about to begin you see is for me good self here. I'll be in the dark. So now, what I want you to do... ...is come along with me and stand there beside me. Officially, uh, you'd be my lawyer, but that's just a little detail now. Oh, well, uh, the thing is... ...don't worry about a thing, all you have to do is stand up there next to me, nothing more. Otherwise, you see, the trial is going to start without me having any kind of representation at all. So it was true. The Lord Chief Justice wasn't just making it all up. Well, thank God. Um, I'm terribly sorry to have to ask, but... 
Does that mean you're the defendant in this trial? Bluster and blazes! Do you s Do you not know who I am? Me, one of London's biggest names! No, sorry. We've only just arrived in the city, you see. Hmm, I see. I suppose it isn't altogether impossible. Well, just next to Hyde Park there in the center of London is another beautiful park. Sorry? A park? What? Tis called McGilded Park, full of blossom and flowers in the spring and singing birds and whatnot. Ah, I donated it to the city, so I did. A an entire park? In central London? A city of smiles, that's my vision for London. There's nothing Magnus McGilded wouldn't do for the city and its queer old people. That's amazing. I mean, really extraordinary. Okay, is he lying? Oh god, ah, but! Now they've the gall to say I'm a good for nothing criminal. Me, Magnus McGilded. What is the matter with the London police, I ask you? Ha, ha, ha. All right, don't pass out. Mr. Naruhoto? Perhaps now would be a good time to introduce ourselves while the gentleman catches his breath. Good idea. Ha, ha, ha. Um, Mr. McGilded, the thing is, we're actually here in London to study British law. We're law students on a study tour from Japan, you see. Ha, ha, ha. So, if you don't have a lawyer for the trial yet, and you'd be happy to put yourself in our hands, we'll do our best. What was I have to say in you, daft idiot? I've given you a thousand guineas to stand up there head next to me, haven't I? Well, yes, but I wasn't really offering you to just stand up there next to you. Uh. Oh, I think I see what's going on here. Sorry? I know what you're thinking. There's chance that Rafaela claims to have more money than the Queen. But if that's true, why the blazes can he hire the finest lawyer in all of England? Because he did it! That's the only explanation! Well? Um, well... Uh... I wasn't really thinking that. Not at all. Not at all. Although, it is a little strange, to be honest. Why you don't have a lawyer, I mean. That would be the fault of the Reaper. Sorry? Did he just say Reaper? Wait, Jack the Ripper? I, the Grim Reaper of the Bailey, Lord Barak Van Zeeks. He's the prosecutor. The prosecutor is the Grim Reaper? When Van Zeeks stands for the prosecution, uh, they call the Akus the sacrificial lambs. Ah, and to this day, in every single trial in which he's been the prosecutor, the Akus has been damned. What? Ah, it's like freaking Edgeworth all over again. So it's reached the desperate situation where there's no one willing to stand in defense against the fella at all. You could say he's a living legend of the old Bailey. Goodness, Lord Beric von Zeeks. He must be an exceptionally talented prosecutor then. Great. Talented isn't the word you're looking for, madam. It's cursed. Cursed? What on earth? Ah, the defendant is summoned and his counsel. Please make your way to the courtroom. The trial is about to begin. His counsel? That would be me. Oh, it's his time. Well then, fella, don't let me down. But. But I don't know anything about the case. You haven't told me what happened. Did you do it? Until you showed your face here? Uh, it may not be mine, so I add. Sorry? I decided I'd have to defend myself in there. Uh, how would that have worked? <laughs> but then you made an appearance. Student of law, wouldn't you know? Tis no accident, I can assure you of that. Tis fate. So don't get cold feet now. Please. Oh, I'm about to have a heart to heart with myself. I literally know nothing about the case, or about this man who stands accused. In fact, the only thing I do know is that I can't just turn my back on him.
Mr. Naruhodo. The man has no one. He'll have to stand alone in that courtroom, armed with nothing to defend himself. Yes, it's something that Cosmo would never have allowed to happen. Ah! Castle for the defense! What are you doing? If you're late for the start of the trial, you will lose your right to stand. Ah, uh, yikes. I'll be right there. It's happening, then. My first trial in a British court. I hope you're watching over me, Kazuma. Because I have no idea how I'm going to manage this. Oh my god. I hope this guy's actually rich and not lying to me. I can't tell if he's just like a pathological liar or- oh wow. Oh, I like the mosaic. 18th February, 10 a.m. The Old Bailey courtroom. Oh, they have- oh god. They have like six judges? So this is the highest court in Great Britain, the Old Bailey. Centuries of history in this place is palpable, isn't it? It's so different to the Supreme Court in Japan. I like how the two scales they have, one is black and one is white. Like, but like, there's a balance between like, black and white, like the gray area. You know what I mean? I don't know if that's what they were going for, but they, yeah, it's cool. It feels both imposing and serene at the same time. The atmosphere almost makes words redundant. Whatever the country, determining a person's guilt or innocence is always a solemn affair. May I say something, Mr. Naruhodo? Oh, yes, what? Huh. Your eyes look ready to pop out of your head again. I know, but I just can't help it! Ah! A <laughs> There's a vampire? What is that? Oh my god, it's Santa Claus. Ho ho, man! In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. We are here today to determine the guilt or innocence of Mr. Magnus McGilded. I now call upon the counselors for the prosecution and defense to declare their willingness to proceed. Uh, what the f- what is- what is going on? He kind of looks like Edgeworth, not gonna lie. Uh, is he German? Deutsch? The prosecution is fully prepared. That sounds French, I don't know. That must be the Reaper or the Bailey. He really does look fully prepared to dispatch his next poor victim to the underworld. Counsel for the defense, you appear to be Eastern. Do you speak English? Huh? Oh, yes, of course, sorry. But he asked if the defense was ready. And I couldn't be further from ready if I tried. Ah. Uh. Those eyes please me, Nipponese. I can't do a German accent. Ah, uh, Deutsch, they shroud your fear, your doubt, your trepidation. They run wild, clinging to some phantom notion of courage. The quintessential look of a sacrificial lamb. Ugh, a cold shiver just ran down my spine all the way to the tips of my toes. Come on, Santa, don't let this vampire kill me. Now, Mr. McGilded. Uh, uh, God. Y yes, my lord. <laughs> I've heard too many accents. You signed a case of murder, a capital offense. You could be sent to the gallows if found guilty. Are you quite sure you wish to entrust your defense to this uh, foreigner? As I've always said, my lord, it is a grand thing to give opportunities to the young. Even if the fella is a student from some little island off in the Far East. Is it not the British way to ignore the dangers to yourself and give those less fortunate a fair chance? I like to think that acts of chivalry do the great British Empire proud. Wow, listen to Mr. McGilday. What a fine gentleman London has in him. Did you hear that he donated 5,000 pounds to the government the other day? Mother, please, maybe go and play in McGilded Park? Oh god. It seems also everyone in the public gallery is firmly behind Mr. McGilded. That's definitely welcome news, and he certainly has a way with words. I'm surprised he couldn't convince anyone to defend him. Well, didn't they say it's like a really obviously looking case? Like he was like, looked like he, like there was a witness and everything or something. 
I eloquently put Mr. Gilded in most laudable sentiments. Now, <clears throat> Santa, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I'm sure I need hardly remind you. Well, that you six members of the public have been selected for your impartiality. Are you ready to proceed? Oh, it's public. I was like, why is there a maid? Why is that guy juggling a knife? She looks like a librarian. We've got the guy from up all the way on the left. Uh, I, the guy in the middle right looks like, I don't know. And then we got a grandma. Interesting. Oh my god, there's way too many voices. Uh, yes, my lord. If the task is to send Rogers to the gallows where they belong, I'm more than ready. As the, at the manor, his lordship always says we should dispose of rubbish promptly. Naturally, I agree. Oh my god. Ha! Any criminals here would soon be wishing they never set eyes on me! Okay, she gives zero shits. He's drinking alcohol. I feel a chill. Oh, don't mind me, my dears. I'll just be getting on with my knitting. Must finish these mitts for my grandson. Ah, uh, Mr. Narahoto, those people are... The jury. Yes, that's something we don't have in Japan yet. That's right. I've only ever read about it. But here in Great Britain, the court's final verdict depends on the opinions of these six jurors. The judge passed the sentence according to the law, but the jurors determined guilt based on common sense. So the defendant is ultimately judged from two completely different points of view. But how exactly do the jurors give their verdict? That I don't know, but... I'm sure it'll become clear as the trial progresses. Yes, uh, God, I hope so. Prosecutor Van Zeeks. Ah, uh, gosh, my lord. It's been a number of years since we've seen you here in the courtroom. I thought you renounced your fame. I'm known as the Reaper of the Bailey, my lord. Uh, infamy rather than fame, I would say. But yes, five years have passed since I last spread my wings in this capacity. So, what brings you back? Is there some change of circumstances of which the court should be aware? Uh, okay, he even dresses like Edgeworth. I mean, come on. I leave that to your imagination, my lord. So the Reaper has been out of action for five years. Uh, why did he have to choose to save all days to make a comeback? Don't lose heart, Mr. Naruhodo. We got it, girl, don't worry. As you wish, sir. The court nevertheless welcomes your return. Now then, opening statements, I think. A summary of the case, if you please. Certainly, my lord. <sighs> As your lordship is aware, this is a case of overwhelming simplicity. We must be the only ones in here who aren't aware. The incident took place in the late evening, three days past. The hour was some minutes after ten. The victim was a maker of building bricks known in the community as Thrice Fire Mason. Sorry? Thrice? Means three, idiot! He was a very accomplished craftsman. Bricks he fired were said to be almost indestructible. Okay. Oh, shit. The vic oh, the victim's corpse was discovered in an only bus in service on the streets of London at the time. A dagger that had been thrust into the victim's abdomen is believed to be the ultimate cause of death. Okay. Here is the autopsy report from the investigating medical officer at Scotland Yard. Thank you, counsel. I shall accept that in the photograph as evidence. Thanks, Santa. A report prepared by the Scotland Yard coroner gives the cause of death as internal hemorrhaging as a result of a single stab wound to the abdomen. Okay. Photograph of the crime scene, a photograph of the victim taken on the omnibus. The knife in his abdomen is clearly visible, but his face is partly obscured from view by an old crooked hat. Interesting. Why did they point that out? And one further item of evidence. The prosecution wishes to submit these as well. And these are... Good lord! 
What's up, Blood Council? Dude, this is a murder trial. Yes, my lord. Seized by a policeman who arrived at the scene. These gore-soaked gloves were taken from the hands of the accused when he was arrested. What? Mr. McGilded's gloves had blood on them? Does he wear gloves? Oh, I guess if they took him, then he's not. But he's wearing rings! Who wears rings and gloves? Well, unless it's cold outside. Okay, never mind. Yes, I will accept these as evidence as well. Uh, the leather gloves the defendant was wearing at the time of the incident, there is a blood stain on the right glove. If he's left-handed, I'm gonna lose my mind. <laughs> I'm kidding. How did I get into this? I'm backed into a corner before I've even started. Continuing. According to the driver of the omnibus, there were only two passengers traveling inside its vehicle at the time. Only two? Obviously, one of those passengers was the deceased brickmaker, Mr. Mason. The other? Who at that point was the accused, Magnus McGilded? Gasp, gasp. Well, the other three, I guess, don't care. Hmm, well, rather damning circumstances, to say the least. Defendant, what say you? Well, of course, I have no recollection of such a thing. Mr. McGilded? To be sure, I rode the omnibus that evening. But whenever I'm in a carriage, I'm taken with a fierce tiredness, and I always succumb to it. I guess no, I was sleeping. Are you claiming to have been asleep? Tis the motion of the carriage, my lord. Wilton, so it is. And when I open my eyes again... That was a desperate sight before me. The body of a man I never laid eyes on before me life. Huh. Now I ask you, so what good-hearted soul wouldn't rush to help a fellow bleeding from his stomach? I wasn't about to stop worrying about me gloves now, was I? I reached out to give the man a hand. So the blood got onto the gloves then, after the man had been killed. Unfortunately, that statement of the drivers is only the beginning. What? That's not all of it? Oh, there were multiple witnesses. To the precise moment at which the brickmaker was fatally stabbed. Oh, shit. Yikes. Ordar! 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 When the killing took place, only the victim and the accused were inside the carriage. And there were witnesses to the crime. This is an older set case of compelling evidence. It's the nail in the coffin for the accused. Why does he have no pupils? <laughs> huh. Thank you, counsel. Circumstances of the crime have been made quite clear. Guilty! Bam! I think we will hear testimony from these witnesses, first of all. Your wish is my command. Oh, now he has pupils. <sighs> Bailiff, bring the witnesses in at once. Here we go. What the? Okay, is that guy alive? Oh god. Witnesses, your names and occupations. Alright. I think I'll actually stop it here. I'm trying to find a good spot. So I think before we talk to the witnesses, it's good. Uh, great. We just always are given these impossible cases that we have to deal with. So, uh, hey, thank you guys so much for watching. Sorry if I uh, start reusing voices because there are suddenly a very much lot of characters. So that's kind of a struggle. <laughs> Everyone's going to be a British guy at this point. Uh, but hey, uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, as always, feel free to leave a like, comment, favorite, or subscribe, whatever you guys are feeling. And until the next time, lights off, dark out.